<laughs> Brian, big news. Oh, hey, Barack, what's going on? Fresh water is running out and the price of food just tripled. Hey, hang on a second, all my hopes, dreams, general concerns and plans for the future. Uh, let me get back to you. <sighs> okay. Greetings humans and welcome back. Fourth video, baby, we're feeling good. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the geopolitical instability that is unfortunately exacerbated by our food system. Right now, agriculture is still very subject to the whims of the weather. It contributes directly to drought and famine. Drought and famine then contribute to political unrest. This leads to mass migration and terrorism, if not outright starvation and death. All while at the same time, we waste unfathomable amounts of food. Now we can't control the weather, yeah. but we can do our best to insulate ourselves from its effects. Currently, 95% of agriculture in Sub-Saharan Africa is still rainfall dependent, and 65% of all the employment is based on agriculture. Here we see a vicious cycle of climate destruction, the reduction of arable land, worsening drought, and then the increased need for fertilizers and pesticides on the remaining land, which then just feeds this cycle further. Even if you're one of those people that thinks you're just not into politics. What? Everything's politics, baby! If you've been alive in the last decade, you've almost definitely heard about the situation in Syria and or in Yemen. Oh, you gonna learn your geography when you with me, boy! Even before the war, Yemen, which is the poorest country in the Arab world, imported about 90% of its food, 70% of its fuel, and almost all of its medical supplies. War broke out, food prices nearly doubled overnight. From 2006 to 2011, up to 60% of Syria's land experienced the worst long-term drought and most severe crop failure since agricultural civilizations began in the Fertile Crescent many millennia ago. Estimates suggest that over 800,000 Syrians completely lost their livelihoods altogether, and approximately 1 million were left extremely food insecure. And projections say that if current greenhouse gas emissions continue, Yields of rain-fed crops may decline between 27 and 59% in the next few decades. Think about it. People are not flooding out of their hometowns and home nations, risking their lives just so that they can sit in the air conditioning and aspire to be one of those MacBook coffee shop people. What the hell are you guys all doing? Unfortunately, these are moves that are often made out of desperation. And as I alluded to in the first video, how much power over your own life do you have when you don't know where your next meal is coming from? Not very much. And how much can you focus on doing other things like educating yourself or your children, working on a new skill, starting a business, when you can't feed yourself? Climate instability is already causing social unrest in many countries. People are crossing deserts and oceans in search of opportunity. The displacement of people by climate change is an unjust consequence that is falling on poor and vulnerable people who have contributed the least to that climate change. Like it or not, these people exist. And this unrest can lead to human rights violations and refugee crises. So clearly, regardless of where you are, this is an issue that affects not only the environment and food, but it's also an issue of national security. Now, of course, terrorism is an extremely complex geopolitical issue with a myriad of causes. But it's pretty safe to say that the more security someone has and the more opportunity someone has, the less likely they are to feel like they have nothing to lose. The National Resources Defense Council estimates that 40% of all the food that is created in this country is lost to food waste. These other resources that go into um, the production, the manufacturing, the transportation, the storage, distribution. All of those resources are swallowed up when we waste food rather than eat it. Of the top 100 most impactful things that we can do to address climate change, food waste prevention is number three. If food waste were a country, it would be the third largest emitter of greenhouse gas emissions after the United States and China. As I talked about in the last video, when you look at starvation, malnutrition and obesity, about one out of every two people on the planet is either suffering from way too much or way too little in terms of food and nutrition. This is a situation where the market is obviously coming up short. All of this to me points to the importance of decommodifying food. Food, much like the water and electricity that is used to grow it, 
and the internet that you're using to watch this should be looked at as a public good. What we need is a resurgence of local ownership. Let's make people stakeholders and shareholders in a new vision of food. Maybe we could take some of these hollowed out malls that are closing because of retail giants like Amazon and revitalize them and turn them into community centers that not only grow food, but teach people how to grow food and that provide jobs, entertainment, and education to the community. In the next video, in an effort to keep things balanced, we'll talk about the limitations of vertical farming and a distributed food system. Thank you guys for watching. I crank the content, you smash the like button. Please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you'd like to see next in the series and we'll talk to you in the next one.